is a past president of the National Speakers Association, and she's in the Speakers Hall of Fame. She has also been inducted into Speakers Roundtable. She is going to help you hone the edges on your presentation process. She's going to help you craft the greatest way to say what it is that you want to say. Words not to use, words and phrases that you do want to use, and why. Take a lot of good notes. You're going to learn a lot from the incredible Miss Patricia Fripp. Don and I belong to a mastermind group, Speakers Roundtable. And one year we had our meeting in San Diego. This was at the Del Carnado Hotel. And after our deliberations, we went out for dinner. And after dinner, we decided we'd like ice cream. And we turned up at Baskin Robbins exactly 9 p.m. when the manager was turning around the closed side. Now, you could tell he was the manager, 16 years old, little white jacket and a cat. One of our pals knocks on the door, says, excuse me, 28 people for ice cream, 10 minutes work. It says, sir, we've closed. My friend looks through the glass door, sees two other teenagers, and thinks, well, it's three kids working for minimum wage. I'll make them an offer. He said, $30 for you three and the sale of 28 ice cream. They huddled, a focus group to study the problem. The kid comes back and said, could you make it $40? Now, we settled for 30 but being sales trainers, we really appreciated that he tried to get more. Because that young man realized two important principles we must never forget. One, life is a series of sales situations. And two, the answer is no if you don't ask. Now, we always know it's no if you don't ask, and sometimes it's no if you do ask. However, I am here to sell you on a simple premise that every sales professional, whether you're novice or seasoned, sell a product or a service, whether you're an entrepreneur or from a large corporation, can increase sales, let's say, conservatively by 25% when you revisit four specific areas of your sales conversations and presentations. Now, we represent different industries, and it's just a way of looking at what you say and how you say it, and then adapting it to your situation. And one morning, I did as we mostly do, I opened my email, and there was a message, Dear Patricia, I'm a big fan of yours, may I interview you for my blog? Now, I don't know about you, but I am a short-term project person. And I was working on a long-term project, developing my online learning program, and I was doing my best to not be distracted. I was about to send an email saying, I'm flattered, I'm honored, I would love to be interviewed. Please call me in three months. And then I thought, well, before I hit send, let me check his website. <laughs> so naturally, I picked up the phone. <laughs> now that you know how dreadfully shallow I am, I said, what is an Emmy Award-winning TV interviewer and game show host doing being my fan? He naturally had a 30-minute interview, and at the end he said, Patricia, this is great information. I can write at least six blogs out of what you told me, but come on. Tell me the number one secret of giving you a powerful, persuasive presentation. I said, oh, there's no one secret. And then I realized a brand new fripicism was about to fall flawlessly from my lips. And I said, although there is no one secret, if there were, it would be that your subject is of interest to your audience. 
And in a sales conversational presentation, that means we have to speak as an audience advocate. As Don says, we have to ask questions and focus our conversations and remarks to them. When we speak in a sales process, especially if you have a long sales process, we have to speak to be remembered and repeated. And what happens is, if we do not get to the decision maker first, which is not as easy as we would like it to be, very often our conversation on what we say is delivered to somebody else before we get to the next stage of the process. And one of the reasons to focus on being more powerful, persuasive, clear, and concise, which will build your credibility, is because we want to speak to the audience of our audience. It might be as simple as nobody's in the office, we're talking to the person who answers the phone or at the reception desk. What is it we say that would be so memorable, so unique, because if you sound the same as everybody else, you have no advantage, that he or she would pass on what you said and say, I think you need a conversation with this person. So we speak to be remembered and repeated, which means remove every word that you do not need and the words that are left are more memorable. Say them in an interesting, unique way and pause so that they can be digested so that the person we talk to can talk to another audience we have not met as of this moment. So certainly what I would encourage you to do after your time with us is take your notes and go back and teach somebody who was not here what you think you learned. Because the best way to reinforce is to teach somebody else. And that way I will be speaking to the audience of my audience even though I might not meet them.